So electric snowboards do exist. I myself have actually built one and it actually works pretty well. And you can even buy one off the shelf if you want. So then the question is, why aren't they becoming more common? Well, firstly, how many of you actually knew that electric snowboards were a thing? I mean, if you're subscribed to me, obviously you know that already, but if this video came up in your recommendeds, did you actually know they were a thing before you clicked on the video? And then there's the big elephant in the room with them. If you take a look at all the footage of electric snowboards actually working, including my own, what do you notice? None of them are on powdered snow. All of it's either on hard packed and dense snow like trampled trails or snow that's semi-melted and then refrozen, or it's a thin layer of powder on top of a hard surface like grass. And the reason that electric snowboards only work in these situations is because of traction. On something the size of an electric snowboard, it's really hard to get enough surface area to actually bite into powder enough to push you forward. With something like snowmobiles, you have a really large tread underneath with a lot of surface area, and you can't really do that with snowboards without making it a lot bigger to the point where it's not really really a snowboard anymore. And so in order to keep the DNA of a snowboard, the actual traction system has to be kept relatively small. And because of that comes the compromise that there's only a limited amount of situations with snow that you can actually use it in. And then compounding things even further, there's the issue of weight distribution. In all the video footage of me riding my electric snowboard, do you notice how my rear foot is as close to the rear wheel as possible? And that's because I'm putting most, if not all of my weight on that rear foot to make the drive wheel really sink in and bite to push me forward. And if you look at reviews of off-the-shelf electric snowboards like the Cyrusha Ripple, one common criticism that you see is that they can't seem to get traction even on the types of surface that it should be able to work on. And that's because their rear foot is too far forward to put meaningful weight down on the drive wheel. Even though these drive wheels are oftentimes spring-loaded to put downward pressure, the natural flex of the board means that there's only a limited amount of pressure that that's going to be able to push down into the snow to push you forward. For all of these people reviewing these electric snowboards, I would almost be willing to to bet that if they swapped out the rear foot binding for a open air traction pad like what I have on my design so they can put their foot a lot further back, they would manage a lot better when it comes to traction and actually getting these things to work. As a matter of fact, I would love to get a hold of one of these Cyrusha ripples so I could experiment with exactly that. So aside from all of the traction related concerns, there's also an issue of range. And electric snowboards get hit from a one-two punch when it comes to things that affect range. The first is that, obviously, it's winter, and the colder it gets, the lower the usable capacity you'll be able to get out of lithium batteries. Which kind of sticks you between a rock and a hard spot, because too warm and your snow is going to melt, and even start binding up in your drivetrain, and too cold and your range and available torque just drops. And the second thing that really hurts your range, and probably the biggest, is drag. You're not rolling around on well-oiled bearings, you're sliding on top of snow, sliding through snow. All of that drag takes a huge hit on your range, like a lot. Which means that if you plan on going very far at all, you have to bring a lot of batteries. On top of all of that, you actually need snow on the ground to be able to ride in the first place, and the right type of snow. Which is almost a no-go if you're in the city, because it usually gets plowed and salted within 24 hours of a snowfall, or melts away not long after, especially if you live in a place that doesn't see too much snowfall in the first place. Which means that you have to go out of your way to find a place to ride it. All this to say, electric snowboards are very niche. But they're a really interesting branch of electric rideable that I am very keen to keep an eye on. 